Shabbat Shalom everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. We are uh, a channel that goes into lessons helping the Israelite community. Um, happy Sabbath. I am happy to say that we are here to see another beautiful Sabbath. I love the summertime. So I'm very excited as always to bring in another Sabbath, um, to be blessed by the Most High Yahweh, to be able to bring out his holy word. Um, and I just want to say our foundational scriptures, which are always, uh, this is the day that Yah has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So I want to also start out in Titus. Uh, we always go over this chapter um, because all of our lessons always come out of these scriptures. So we're going to go over Titus 2, 3 through 5, and it reads as follows. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, and the word of Yah be not blasphemed. So the title of today's lesson is Ways to Become a Better Israelite Woman. And this is going to be precept heavy. I'm going to warn you now. <laughs> so if you have one, get out your uh, 16 James, uh, 16, um, your King James uh, version apocrypha and with the apocrypha, getting a little tongue tied there, but make sure you have your Bible. Um, hopefully you have a notebook and a pen. This is going to be precept heavy. As I said, we're going to be bringing out a lot. So I'll try not to talk a whole lot in between so we can bring out all of these scriptures that I want to kind of get into. So again, the lesson is ways to become a better Israelite woman. You know, I have to start out by saying this. Um, when I first got into this truth, I prayed and hoped I could have found a video like this. Um, just kind of just breaking it down as simply as possible about how to better myself. Um, but I'm making this video because y'all put it on my spirit. that There are a lot of women that are still new in this truth. And there's people, thank goodness, that are coming in all the time. Um, into this truth. So I pray that this video is edifying um, and I pray that it reaches who it needs to reach um, so they can learn how to just kind of skip over a lot of the errors that I made and a lot of errors that I'm sure a lot of you other sisters have made um, if somebody just kind of would have helped us out, you know, along the way. Um, but uh, this is also for women that have been in the truth for a little while, you know, and are still, you know, looking for ways to better themselves. Um, so again, I, you know, I definitely pray, um, that, uh, that everybody finds this lesson encouraging and edifying on how to better ourselves. We are all on this journey to better ourselves. None of us are perfect. None of us are going to make it there 1000% and be completely perfect. Um, but we're going to strive for it. We are absolutely going to strive for it and constantly better ourselves. So again, the lesson is titled ways to help become a better Israelite woman. So I'm going to run through, I think about nine um, different uh, tips that I have here uh, written down. And the first and foremost is to seek Yahweh, the Most High, for understanding, not man. And I know a lot of the times uh, people are in this truth through camps and people are in this truth um, you know, by themselves. So they have, you know, a lot of questions and they, and they end up going to man about those things that you just don't know how to really navigate through the Bible and find scriptures. Um, and you kind of lean on somebody else's understanding. Um, but I, I encourage all of you, um, to grow your own relationship, you know, with Hamashiach Yahawashai, um, that is going to help you um, be able to get to our father. Um, so it's, it's truly important to be able to seek Yahweh for understanding. So, um, don't put anybody on a pedestal. Seriously. I mean, cause they can let you down. And most of the time people always let you down. So it's good, um, to just focus on the Godhead, which is the most high, his son, Hamashiach, Yehoshai, and the Holy Spirit. And they'll never let you down. Never, ever, ever will they let you down. So I want to start out by going into Psalms 119. So let's get the Bible out. Let's flip on over to Psalm and go to 119 and verse 59. 
All right, so Psalm 119 and 59 reads as follows. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. And I saw another sister bring that, that scripture out. And to be honest with you, I had never even highlighted that. Um, and when she did, I watched her YouTube channel. And when she did, and she said it meant so much to her. Um, and when she was first getting into this truth that I, I went back and I highlighted. And I was like, man, I, I wish I would have had this one too written down. So I made sure I wrote it down. Um, and, uh, and it, it, and it says a lot right here in these, in this one little line, I thought on my ways and turned my feet into thy testimonies. I mean, that is just beautiful. So that's what you want to do. You want to turn from your ways to the most highs ways. Um, and the next one that I want to go into, and, and again, that's seeking him out. You know, you really want to make sure that you are, um, getting away from your worldly strongholds and you're trying to find out exactly how to build this relationship with him, how to be able to have him help you become a better person. So the next one I want to go to is Second Chronicles. So we're going to go back a little bit and go to chapter 7 and verse 14. So Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 reads as follows. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, only then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And that right here is a, a, is a precept. Please highlight. Nothing will happen. I think that's honestly why we're still dealing with our captivity well beyond the 400 years because so many of our people have not repented, turned from their wicked ways, and started to seek the Most High. So again, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So again, it goes into seeking Yahweh for understanding. So I got two more here in the book of Proverbs. So let's go back. To the book of Proverbs, and the first one's going to be in chapter 28. All right, 26, All right, so it's going to be 28 and 5. So, Proverbs 28 and 5 Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Most High understand all things. And that's just a great precept to have because that really does underscore that when you seek the most high for understanding, he will bless you with understanding. So when you're beginning in this truth um, and things don't make sense and you're, you know, you're getting beating up on yourself because you don't think you know everything, you haven't remembered these precepts or, you know, taking the time to, you know, kind of memorize and start putting them into action because you're new, you know, so it's a, it's, it's, it's a it's a journey, you know. So it's step by step by step, um, but it's such encouraging. It's to, it's so encouraging to be able to read these scriptures. So we're gonna say it again. So Proverbs twenty eight and five: Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Most High understand all things. I just love that. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna stay in Proverbs and go back to chapter two, and read three through five. So Proverbs chapter two, three through five, uh, and this is the last one for this tip, um, and it reads as follows. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth, lifteth, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searcheth for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Most High and find the knowledge of Yahweh. And that is just, man, I mean, he just gives you so much instruction. You know, I think a lot of times we, you know, don't really take the time to read like we should. And if you, you know, try to carve out that time, um, it's so many different scriptures that you'll find that are so encouraging and it really helps you on your way. You know, it really does underscore a lot of the things that you're thinking of and it leads you in the right direction. Um, and it's just, it's, it's here for a reason. You know, we have this Bible here for a reason. So get into it, 
break it down, highlight it, write in it. It's yours, you know, it, and really make it yours and break it down. You know, I, I love when I see some of the videos where these guys have Bibles and they're all torn apart. You can tell they're really in it. So, you know, us ladies have to do the same thing. Really get in it. The Most High wants us to be in it just the same so you can begin to speak these precepts. So again, it says Proverbs 2, 3 through 5. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up, lifteth up thy voice. I don't know why I can't say that one. Lift up, liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searcheth for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Most High and find the knowledge of Yahweh. Just beautiful. That's just so beautiful. It tells you so much right there. And all these precepts, I hope that you go over these and continue to, you know, meditate on them. Um, so the next uh, tip, if you will, that I wanted to um, go over to become a better Israelite woman is get in order in your household. Number two, first seek Yahweh for understanding. The second one, get in order in your household. And this is so very important, you know, due to our history, um, being so-called African-Americans, um, a lot of us women were raised without fathers in the household, me included. You know, I was raised by a, a single mom as well. And we were raised without strong men in the household. Um, so getting in order and following your man and being submissive and respectful um, might be new to a lot of us. Um, but it's very important. You know, the Most High, you know, puts a lot of emphasis on it. I don't just want to say important. He puts a lot of emphasis on it. You have to do it. Um, and it is a way to be able to bring a lot of peace in your house. Um, because if you just continue to follow your worldly strongholds and not get an order, then I'm sure you're arguing a lot with your man. Believe you me, I, I can I guarantee you you're having way more arguments than if you would if you've learned to kind of go over some of these other tips like correcting yourself. I'm going to go over things like that um, about how to do these different tasks to be able to make being submissive and being um, respectful a little bit easier. Um, so the first one I want to go over is the law that says what it says. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. Y'all know you know. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read 3. And then drop down to 8 through 12. So 1 Corinthians 11 and 3 reads as follows. But I would have you know that the head of every man is uh Hamashiach Yehoshai or Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Hamashiach Yehoshai or Christ is God, so-called God, uh, Yehoshua. <laughs> so um, he tells you the order right here. You know, it is the children. Above the children is the woman. Above the woman is your husband. Above the husband is the Messiah and above him is our father. So there is an absolute order to all these things. So then we're going to also drop down to 8 through 12. And it says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. As we know, Eve was taken out of uh, Adam's rib. So neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause, ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Most High. For as the woman is of the man, even is even so, like it, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of the Most High. So that um, is so encouraging. But the next one that I want to get into kind of balances all of that out. Um, and it, it, it balances out uh, the household. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to read 21 through 31. So Ephesians 5, 21 through 31 reads as follows. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Most High. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Most High. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Hamashiach Yehoshai is the head of the church, 
and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahawashai, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Yahawashai also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherishes it, even to uh, even as the Salaki, even as the Most High, the Church. For we now, for we are members of His body, of His flesh, of His bones. And for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So it all balances itself out. So don't be that worldly woman that doesn't want to be submissive, you know, thinking that you're just don't follow these wicked women. I've been seeing a lot of stuff online about what their definitions are of being submissive, what their definitions are of being respectful and wanting to follow a man. And it's always coming from a woman that's single. I'll tell you that all the time. So, you know, anytime you get into these scriptures and you're really trying to follow the truth, then you do it because of the fear of the Most High. You do it because you want to make sure that you are pleasing um, Him in following the law, statutes, and commandments. And it says what it says. It says what it says very clearly. So I want to finish off um, getting an order with Mark 10 and 5, which is a absolutely beautiful precept. Sorry, 10 and 9. I think I said that, 10 and 9. So Mark 10, verse 9. What therefore uh, the Most High or Yahweh or Elohim have joined together, let no man put asunder. So that is also something that I wanted to bring out because if Yah has put you together, then let no man put asunder. Don't let the world get in your ear. Um, no man is able to break you apart. Don't let these spirits break you apart and get on you. Um, try to continue to be a better Israelite woman, be the better wife, be the better mother, be a better version of yourself. So the third um, tip that I wanted to bring out to be a better Israelite woman is to fast and to pray to rid yourself of strongholds. If you are in this family, <laughs> you watch my videos, then you know, I'm always saying you have to fast and pray to rid yourself of strongholds. And it's so true. It is so true. I praise the most high for changing me personally. And I can attest to the benefit and the, um, of what, what you, what you receive from fasting and praying, you know, when you come on the other side of, of really trying to get rid of the old man, the old woman, um, it is all through fasting and praying, you know, putting that into practice will help to change you. Um, you know, the scripture says Mark 9 and 29. I wrote this down because it says this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So we want to make sure that we continuously get rid of the old man, old woman. So let's go to Isaiah 58. Look right to Isaiah. Hello. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll let you guys get there. I flipped there very fast because that's just the spirit. So let's go to Isaiah 58 and 3. And I love this. Well, while you guys are getting there, I love Isaiah 58 and 3. It really does underscore um, fasting and praying um, and what that really does. So it says, it reads as follows, Isaiah 58 and 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seekest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all of your labors. And that is so true. That is absolutely so true that we afflict our souls and that we know that when we do this, we do it with pleasure because we know that we're going to get knowledge from it. Um, and uh, the next one I wanted to go into with fasting and praying is Ephesians in 4. I'm going to read 22 through 27. So let's go back to the 
New Testament and go to Ephesians 4, 22 through 27. And this is the old man, the old woman. All right, so that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which after Yahweh is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither take pla neither give place to the devil. And that is just what we all have to do. As I flip, we're going to flip to James 4 and 7. But that right there um, is what our goal is on this walk. Um, it is to absolutely get rid of the old man, the old woman, to change our former conversations, to get out of these habits in this corruptible flesh continue to repent continue to check yourself all the time um which is going to be the next tip i'm going to bring out which is examining yourself but before we get there i want to bring out uh, james 4 and 7. so james 4 and 7 reads as follows submit yourselves therefore to elohim resist the devil and he will flee from you um so ridding yourself of all these strongholds fat through fasting and praying is a way to be able to resist the devil and he will flee you'll you'll get a hedge around you from the most high that's why i wanted to i looked up these scriptures for a reason you know i know a lot of these are classics and you've heard them but they're so true to what i want to kind of touch on so you can look at these scriptures in a, in, a, in more of a of a twofold way um because there's all these you know or look at them in a twofold way um because there's so many different deep layers um, in all of these scriptures that are in this Bible, you know, you can read it on the surface and understand it. And then it can also mean, excuse me, it can also mean something else. Pick it sip water. And it can also mean something else. Um, so draw nigh to Yah and he will draw nigh to you as scripture says. So go to, uh, Philippians 2 and 12, um, while I take a sip. And the next tip I wanted to go over is to examine yourself. So when you're trying to become a better Israelite woman, you have to examine yourself. You know, it's so easy to be able to um, just kind of be in the same habit that you were in the world, which was never really checking yourself. I'm sure most people don't look at themselves and think anything's wrong with them. They don't grow. They don't, um, you know, constantly take accountability. Um, for how they are but in this truth you have to because the most high is going to be the ultimate judge and he is looking at everything that you're doing writing it down with an iron pen as the scripture says so we have to stay in repent so, you know I mean we have to stay repentant we have to constantly repent all the time every single day because you're held accountable for every idle word for your thoughts everything so you want to be able to examine yourself and see how you're going off and making sure that you don't do that so whatever that is you want to make sure you don't do it. Um, so examining yourself will help you to stay humble and continue to shed the old man that we just talked about. So let me go to, um, let's go to Philippians. And we're going to read 2 through 12. And it reads as follows. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And if you're in this truth for a little bit, that's probably one of your favorite precepts because you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You can't ride on the coattails of anybody up into that kingdom. Nobody. You have to examine yourself. You have to grow yourself. You have to clean your own garment you have to make sure that you are one of the stones that he puts in the tower you have to make sure that you are shedding the old man you've got to examine yourself so if you are new to this truth or if you are in this truth and you're still looking to better yourself that's so that's one of the main things that you want to do is to be able to examine yourself and find out 
how you can always strive to be the better Israelite woman that you can become. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Second Corinthians 10 and 5, and it reads as follows. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. That is something that I think that I really wanted to bring out because I think that along with examining yourself, it really does help when you capture your thoughts. And when I kind of put that into practice, it really helped me personally to be able to start to really change my ways because you can find that you can have murmuring against, you know, your husband because he's, you know, you know, exuding authority like he should be. Um, and it, you know, and it makes you kind of feel some kind of way. <laughs> I'll tell you that it makes you feel some kind of way. So you got to capture your thoughts. The most I hear is your thoughts. You know, if you can, if you can understand how he can understand and hear the thoughts of evil people, then you can, it's the same for you. You may not be out there running to, you know, commit sin or running out there and killing people. But even these little thoughts that we have, even these little thoughts that you have, um, you know, that may not even be as bad as you might think that they are, they might be to the most high. So you really want to capture your thoughts. And even when you think of crazy stuff about going off, of course, capture those, but always kind of check where your mind is going because your mind can go as we know. I mean, it can, you can look at a dog and your mind might be like, kick that dog. And you, and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> so, you know, why would I think that? But your mind can think these crazy things from stuff that we watch on TV, the stuff that we listen to your subconscious mind, you know, so always make sure that you're capturing your thoughts. So I want to go to Psalm 139. So let's go to the book of Psalms. And let's go to 139, and we're going to read 23 and 24. Yes. And this is one of my favorite, which I wanted to end off examining yourself, because this is kind of hard for people um, to do what, what David wrote down in here. So I'm going to bring this out, um, and hopefully you all can get into a humble place where you can begin to do this. So psalm 139 23 and 24 is search me O yahweh and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting oh that's just <sighs> david just put it perfectly make sure that you search in me you know pray for that Pray for that. And, that. and that's difficult, but make sure that you start to begin to pray for that, to ask the Most High, to be able to search your ways, to be able to try you, you know, know your thoughts. And if there's any wicked way in me, lead me in the right way. Lead me in the way everlasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the next thing I wanted to bring out is, uh, the, is the fifth one, and that is reading and studying. And when I was going over my lesson with my king, um, he made a good point uh, to put these two together because at first I had them separate um, and I was like, I can kind of keep them separate. But, you know, the most I led me uh, in the way that he was saying, which is like he said, he said, well, that's probably what I'm telling you because, you know, the spirit's probably telling me to tell you this. So put them together. So now I just wanted to go over just a little bit of a difference. So we're going to keep it together. So reading and studying is one of the main ways as well um, to become a better Israelite woman. Um, so both of these tasks are combined to be able to help you with your learning, as we know, um, but there's a slight difference. So with studying requires devotion, time, and energy. It involves researching. It involves learning these precepts, all while remembering, which is essential when you're studying. Always know that when you're studying, it's about memory, which is very essential. Now, reading involves going through the Bible, gathering the information from it, um, and remembering what you read is not as essential, but understanding is more critical. 
So that's why I wanted to make sure you understand both of these and keep them both together because I want you to be encouraged to take the time to read on a daily basis. But also what you're writing down, like these precepts that I'm going over now, is taking the time to study those precepts and to start remembering those precepts and put those precepts into order, but in, in uh, into action. Um, but when you're reading, for sure, understanding the Bible, understanding these stories, understanding our ancestors and our forefathers, foremothers, our ancestors, however you want to say it, understanding their lives and all of the things that they did so you can get to a point where you're where you are, it's better, it's easier to check yourself because you can see how people went off, like reading first and second Kings and seeing how all the Kings went off or, you know, reading different stories, like, and seeing how Jezebel went off. We all know about her. Um, but there's so many other intricate stories that are in there that are not as famous, um, that really teach you a lot. So taking that time to read daily is so very important. So I want to bring out the first one in the law is in Deuteronomy. And we're going to go to Deuteronomy 17 and 19. So let's go back, 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 back to the beginning. And let's go to Deuteronomy 17 and 19. And it reads as follows. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life. And he that may learn to fear the Most High, his Elohim, to keep all the words of these law, of this law and these statues and to do them. And I think I might want to read 20. No, I'll stop right there. That, that pretty much captures everything. It just tells you that the next one just tells you don't, you know, that, that his heart may not be lifted up above his brethren because you're keeping your law, statutes, and commandments in your reading. Um, so the next thing I wanted to go to is Luke four and four. So let's go all the way the other way and go to Luke four and four. And it reads as follows. And Hamashiach Kehawashai answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of Elohim. And this word is life and is truth. So you live by this. So it is fantastic to be able to get into the habit of reading and studying it. So you understand um, that you live by not bread alone, but by every word of the Most High. So let's go to Revelation 1 and 3. Told you it's precept heavy today. We're going in today. We're bringing it all out. All right, so Revelation 1 and 3 reads as follows. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things that are written therein, for the time is at hand. So the next one I wanted to go to was 2 Timothy and that's going to be 2 through 15. And if you know, this is one of the famous ones. And it reads as follows. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim and a Salakia, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you want to study to show thyself approved, taking the time to really go over your precepts and studying them where you can, you know, work to um, memorize them. Um, so then when you're speaking to your king, um, you can answer with these precepts, which is what the Most High wants you to do. Not always answering with your own words, but try to really meditate on these precepts um, so you can answer with those precepts. Which takes away from, you know, which takes away from the old woman, you know, and, can, and continues to change you. So let's go to Proverbs 15 and 8, sorry, 15 and 28. Proverbs Fifteen and twenty-eight reads as follows: The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. And that just really kind of underlines what I just said. You know, when you study um, and start to remember your precepts, and you'll start speaking those precepts. So the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, 
So you're not just answering from emotion or answering because it's what you're used to saying. Um, and that's just who you are. You know, the point of changing and becoming a new woman in this truth is to change who you are. So studying is, is absolutely crucial. Um, so let's go to Colossians 4 and 6. So Colossians 4 and verse 6 reads as follows. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Hmm. I love that one. That's fantastic. And let's skip over just to the right to the next chapter. Right next to it, you'll see Thessalonians. And we're going to stay in 1 Thessalonians. We're going to go to 4 and 11. So about one more page over. So 1 Thessalonians, for well, your book Bible may not be exactly as mine, but the books are still the same. So Thessalonians is the next one over. <laughs> so flipping until you get to 4. And then let's go to 11. And it reads as follows. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And I finished off that one. Um, that task of reading and studying with the scripture for a reason um, because we want to make sure that we put in the practice of changing ourselves and not doing so much talking as an old man or old woman would do you know because we can be filled with so many worldly behaviors and um, demeanor um, and just answering the way that you've always answered but that's not righteous you know our old man was is separated from our new man for a reason in these scriptures. Um, so we want to make sure that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as he commanded you. So number six um, that I wanted to go over is the dietary law. So when you come into this truth, one of the first things that you want to make sure that you're meditating on is the first five books, is the law. Um, law, statutes, and commandments are all throughout the Bible. There's 613 law, statutes, and commandments, but you want to make sure that those first five books you are reading um, because that is the Torah, you know, written by Moses, and it goes into so many things. And we, um, you know, as the scripture says, but his delights, I won't even botch this up, I wrote this down. Scripture says, but his delight is in the law of the Most High, and in his law doth he meditate day and night so you want to make sure that you're constantly reading over um the you know the first five books and the dietary law is in leviticus 11 so read that entire chapter we're going to touch on it quickly as I'm, I'm touching on this quickly because i want you to read the whole chapter so write down leviticus 11 and make sure that you're reading the whole chapter so that it can teach you how you're cutting out pork and all of shellfish um, now, those are some of the first things that we should be doing when we get into this truth. So you really want to make sure that you're writing that down because to become a better Israelite woman and you're new into this truth, uh, definitely cutting out pork and shellfish is muy importante, muy. So number seven is uh, wrapping your head during the reading of the word. Wrapping your head. Now, you don't have to have your head wrapped all the time. You can definitely go outside and your head doesn't have to be wrapped. But when the scriptures are coming out, wrap your head. So let's go to 1 Colossians and let's see where that's written and bring that out. 1 Colossians 11. And we're going to read 5 through 6. And it reads as follows. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one, for that is even all one is she were shaven, if she were shaven. And so I'll read that again. But every man that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. So that's the law. <laughs> that is the law. You got to do it. You got to do it. And there's so many different hairstyles, you know, or head wrap styles. 
um, to put over top of your, your hair. I mean, so just kind of do um, research on social media. You'll see so many different pictures of women that have um, added so much flavor to how to wrap your head. We are not Muslims. We do not wear our head wraps the same. Um, so, you know, try to try all different ways um, and have fun with it. Have fun with different ones. You know, I've seen so many pattern head wraps um, to mix and match with your outfits um, and different styles. Um, so have fun with it. Find your style. Um, so number eight is modest clothing. And that was one of the um, videos I did probably a couple weeks ago. And I really, really broke down modest clothing, but it has to be touched on here within this lesson um, because that is one of the main points that you want to be able to touch on and tasks that you want to be able to complete when you're new into this truth is getting into modest clothing. So again, it's shedding your old woman and growing on this walk. And I just saw a meme the other day and I wrote this down um, and I like this. So you guys, some of you guys might've heard this, but it says dress how you want to be addressed. Now that don't say a lot. <laughs> dress how you want to be addressed. Mm. So let's go to numbers. I want to touch on fringes. And then we're also going to touch on modest clothing. And then we just have one more and we're going to wrap this up. So let's go to numbers 15 and 38. And we're going to read 38 through 40. All right. So it reads as follows. Numbers 15, 38 through 40. Speak ye unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Most High and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring that we may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your Elohim. So I love that. So let's also go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and bring out the classic about how to dress as a woman. So Deuteronomy 22 and 5, the woman shall not wear that, pertain that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination, unto the most high thy Elohim. So we're going to also finish that off with 1 Timothy 2 and 9. So let's go to 1 Timothy. First Timothy 2 and 9 reads as follows. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh woman, which becometh women professing godliness with good works. All right. And the last but not least is to love all Israel. Sorry, I shook the camera there. To love all Israel. Now, this is a commandment that Israel still struggles with. It hurts my heart that I can turn on YouTube and see videos of fighting within Israel um, and hear stories about women, that's men fighting within Israel, and then hear also hearing stories about women um, just continuing to backbite or to gossip and to cause discourse in communities that they're involved in. Um, so we still struggle with this, um, but I want to go over some scriptures of how important it is to the Most High that we get this right. So let's go to 1 John 4 and 20. And this one right here is just, I love to bring this out because it's just so true of how he can, how he feels about it and how he captured it. Um, and he led Paul to write it this way. So 1 John 4 and 20 and 21, if a man say, I love Elohim and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love Elohim, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth Elohim, our most high, love his brother also. 
So that just captures everything up right there. I mean, because we can say that it's, you know, easy to do that, but it's easier to hate. It's not easy to love. It's easier to hate. That's why I put this in here. So you can love, you can say you love me and obey, and obey me, but you can't even get along, you know, with somebody that I put right in front of you, you know? So he, he, he doesn't even understand how we have so much discourse. And I understand it's the curses and, and he gets that stuff too, but you got to fight against that stuff. You can't just lean on that and say, oh, it's the curses. So we're going to go to James 4 and 11. So James 4 and 11 reads as follows. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. So try to not speak evil one to another. And we're going to finish this off with two more precepts. The first one is going to be in Leviticus. And we're going to go to 19 and 17. Leviticus 19 and 17 reads as follows. That shall not, thou shall not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you do not hate your brother or your sister in your heart. You have love for all of Israel. And we are so stiff necked that we have to have patience with each other. We're going to, uh, I'm going to finish this off in Philippians. So we'll go to Philippians while I finish this up. But um, Philippians four. Um, it's so, it's so true that, you know, we have so much hate for one another and we can, um, you know, talk so bad about each other and not lift each other up and, and not, um, continuing to check ourselves and just act like everybody's individuals. No, if they're in the nation of Israel, you have to check yourself and, and make sure that you're nicer and more kind. The most high is with us. You read all these stories. If you, if you've gotten into these, into these scriptures, about how badly we went off, starting from Exodus. And the Most High never put us away, you know, and for us to have just the little bit of patience that we have um, with our brothers and our sisters is ridiculous. You know, we can't, we can't do it, but, you know, we expect the Most High to continue to um, forgive us. And we're like, no, I can't, I can't forgive this person. You know, they've done me wrong. Well, we did the Most High wrong. Have long suffering, work to have long suffering, just like he has with us. And I'm going to finish this off, this whole video off with Philippians 4 and 13. And it reads as follows. I can do all things through Hamashiach Yahawashai, which strengthens me. So I hope that this lesson was edifying. I pray that you all have a beautiful Sabbath. I hope that this has helped women that are new in the truth and women that are still looking to better themselves of how we can all become a better Israelite woman. So I pray and I hope that this reaches you. Um, you know, hit me up at the bottom of this and comment, like, and share. Um, if you love this content, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to continue, y'all willing, to post every Friday. <laughs> um, but with all things, we can do all things through Hamashiach Yehawashai, who strengthens us. Every single point that I brought out. Shabbat shalom.